We'll now invite Dr. Benjamin Chua, a medical director and a senior consultant vascular surgeon for Vascular Interventional Center. We will sh he will share more about the various vascular-related conditions specific to men's health and alternative treatments. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Dr. Benjamin Chua. I'm a vascular surgeon. And today I'm going to talk about a topic that's close to the hearts of many men. It may be embarrassing for them sometimes to talk about it. It is like a dirty little secret that they don't want to talk about, but they live with this problem and are embarrassed and they try and find different issues uh, and answers and sometimes uh, to no avail. And the topic is, uh, of course, uh, venous leak and how it relates to erectile dysfunction. The title of my talk is Venus Leak and Erectile Dysfunction, Hard to Get a Grip on Some Issues. Now, really, what is venous leak and how does it lead to erectile dysfunction? Now, traditionally, we know that for a man to attain an erection for intercourse, sexual intercourse, uh, there are a few factors, but basically it's related uh, to the way blood flows into the penis and how blood is retained in the penis uh, before it's released. So venous leak refers to the ability to maintain an erection in the presence of sufficient arterial blood inflow to the cavernosal arteries of the penis. And the cause of venous leak is often due to the excessive outflow of blood. In other words, uncontrolled outflow of blood from the same cavernosal arteries and they drain quickly out of the penis. As a result, a man is unable to sustain an erection for a period of time, uh, at least sufficient enough to have sexual intercourse. Now, venous leak is responsible for about 80% of, of cases of erectile dysfunction. Now, how do we diagnose venous leak? Uh, essentially, it is using a Doppler ultrasound, that is an ultrasound scan, and we use that uh, to check the blood flow in and out of the penis. Uh, that is usually the basic investigation we do, and it's non-invasive. It is not painful at all. It can be done on an outpatient basis, and quite quickly we get the diagnosis. Rarely when the ultrasound uh, does not give us a very clear picture, then we go to something called a cavernosography. And a cavernosography is usually a test uh, where we make an injection uh, with some contrast into the penile tissue and we look at how it flows and how it drains. That is slightly more invasive, but it is not extremely painful and can be done under local anesthesia. Now, um, in, in such cases, after we diagnose a venous leak, uh, then we think about ways to treat. And usually, uh, uh, the way we look at it is we want to avoid invasive surgery. The traditional surgery to treat venous leak is actually very invasive. It involves removing all the main venous drainage uh, of the penis through open surgery and can be quite painful with slow recovery. Nowadays, we do a procedure where we call it endovascular embolization. And patients who are eligible for this are usually patients who have a proven venous leak and they want to avoid invasive surgery. Now, in the endovascular embolization or non-surgical treatment of venous leak erectile dysfunction, what we do is we make a pinhole puncture into the veins, uh, either in the groin or sometimes we use uh, at the neck. But more often, we uh, give a patient a light anesthesia and we puncture the deep dorsal vein of the penis uh, although it sounds like it's painful, actually it's not. Uh, patients don't feel anything at all when we do the, the procedure. And uh, that's done under local anesthetic and a little bit of sedation. We numb the skin around there. And we make a tiny puncture to the deep dorsal uh, penile vein. And then we do something called an angiogram. An angiogram is where we inject a little bit of contrast, look at the flow patterns in the vein, especially how fast uh, the, the vein drains blood. In other words, we inject contrast and we see how fast that contrast is drained from the penis. We also look at the size of the drainage veins uh, that are affected. And uh, usually the larger it is, it tells us that it's not working too well. Now, once we diagnose this and we see that the veins are very enlarged and they're draining very fast, uh, we then block off these veins. And the idea of blocking off these veins is so that the drainage, the the fast drainage or the loss of blood from the penis after an erection is uh, obtained, that process is now slowed down by blocking off these key drainage veins. As a result, the erection is then sustained. And how do we block these veins? We usually use tiny titanium coils. These are uh, biocompatible 
coils they can be left in the body for a long time and they are inert they won't trigger any alarms or anything we just insert some of these coils to block the outflow and sometimes we use a little bit of tissue glue they are compatible again with the tissues in the human body and sometimes we use an embolic agent which is basically uh, some sort of um, uh, uh, chemical that basically blocks the artery and this is all localized and the idea is we do this under x-ray guidance so that we permanently seal off these veins uh, so that only the small side drainage veins are working and these big uh, defective veins are blocked off. As a result, blood is able to flow in quickly into the penis, but it's slow to drain out and this helps sustain an erection. Now, this procedure, as I mentioned, can be performed under light sedation, which means we give you a little bit of medication to make you feel sleepy and then we give a local anesthesia around the area that we are going to put in this catheters and coils and they're usually numb and uh, painless and the procedure takes us about an hour to hour and a half there's minimal pain and discomfort more importantly no open surgical scars and patients essentially once the procedure is over they are awake alert and they can uh, get up and walk uh, immediately after uh, usually uh, about half an hour uh, to one hour, they can actually uh, be discharged home. Uh, normally, we keep for two hours just as a precaution and they can return to their daily activities. In the patients that we have done, they've also reported that a quick return uh, to sexual activities and as much as the next morning or next day, they're having an erection already that is sustained. So this shows you uh, that uh, it's quite quick. Uh, many of the patients who used to take um, oral medication for erectile dysfunction after this procedure, they don't require any more medication and they function quite normally and happily. Thank you very much. Today I'm going to share with you about venous leak and erectile dysfunction and how venous leak leads to erectile dysfunction in men. Venous leak is a condition where you have varicose veins of the pelvis and these veins become very big and what they do is they drain blood excessively from the penis during an erection. As a result, the man is unable to sustain his erection uh, due to this leak uh, and is unable to have intercourse. Uh, this results in then what we call erectile dysfunction. Psychologically, it affects many men. It affects them mentally, it affects their relationships with their partners and is very distressing. Many men don't like to talk about it, especially so since it affects young men more than old men. In fact, in all the cases of erectile dysfunction, venous leak is responsible for up to 80% of these cases. So how do we diagnose the condition of venous leak? Uh, one is a very good history uh, taken from the patient. Although we may ask very intimate questions during the consult, at least we know from the patient's history what the problem is. And sometimes that gives us an indication that there is a problem with the venous leak. But the real diagnostic test actually uh, comes from uh, doing two things, an ultrasound scan and a CT scan. So we can do the ultrasound scan in the clinic. And in, in this ultrasound scan, what we do is we examine the patient's blood flow in his pelvis and also in uh, the penile gland or penis uh, and sometimes we complement that with an uh, extra imaging and that's a CT scan. With these two images which are both uh, non-invasive, uh, we can diagnose the problem of venous leak. So frequently men who have had venous leak will have tried seeing many doctors. Some people will have taken some medication like Viagra or Cialis to help them attain an erection but they still find that they are unable to have intercourse because they cannot sustain the erection. So after we diagnose the venous leak with an ultrasound or a CT scan, what we then do is then consider treatment. Right now, uh, the latest way of treating this is actually minimally invasive. In fact, it is almost non-surgical. And now, if you know the problem of venous leak is actually these big dilated veins, as you can see there on the screen, what we then do is reduce the leak of these veins and we use sometimes small metallic inert biocompatible uh, coils or we inject some glue that's also biocompatible. As a result, uh, the leak is reduced significantly and so blood is now retained inside the penis for longer periods. Uh, as a result, uh, the man is able to sustain his erection and continue to have intercourse like he did before this problem 
uh, developed. Uh, this is a very good procedure because it is done uh, first uh, minimally invasive, almost non-surgical with local anesthesia and a little bit of uh, sedation and it's done like a day surgery. More importantly, uh, the men who have undergone this procedure tell us that by the next morning they are already feeling a lot better and they see an improvement uh, in their erectile dysfunction. And many men then subsequently also uh, go off all their medication to treat erectile dysfunction and are happy. Uh, in terms of how long this is a sustainable, uh, this has been shown to be uh, a long term. Uh, so many men at up to two to five years are still having very good results and are very, very happy. So this is a way of doing this procedure. We call it embolization and coiling uh, for treatment of venous leak resulting in, in rectal dysfunction. Now I move on to the next topic that I'm going to share with you, and that is uh, a topic on varicose veins in men. You may wonder why I'm talking about varicose veins in men, especially many of us think that varicose veins are a problem related to women and in their legs. But really, varicose veins can affect men, and particularly, it is a condition known as varicocele. And today, I'll share with you about how these two things are related, varicose veins and varicocele. Now, what are varicoceles? Varicocele is a condition that affects men, and it is caused by varicose vein within the scrotum of men. Basically, that is the loose bag of skin that holds our testicles. Now, varicose veins occur in these uh, uh, veins in the scrotum when the valves are weakened and do not cl close properly. Now, the condition of varicose seal actually is quite common. It affects about 20% of men, about one in every five men. Now, as a result, the, the blood flows back down towards the scrotum and the veins above the, scro the testicles in the scrotum get dilated and engorged. As a result, the temperature in that region is higher. So one of the side effects of having a varicocele is low sperm count or low semen product, uh, quality of sperm. Uh, this is because of the higher temperature in the region due to the backfill of blood and that's pooling above the testis. As a result, men with varicocele may find that they are infertile. Also, because of the pressure at the back, filling of these veins, uh, many men experience persistent scrotal pain, and this is especially so when they are standing for long periods of time, or even sitting for long periods of time, and sometimes so when they are actively involved in sports. As a result of the blood pooling there, there's pressure on the testes, and many men feel a persistent, constant ache in the scrotum. Uh, in rarer cases, because of the varicocele being present above the testes, the testes uh, feel a little bit of pressure and the heat. Uh, they then fail to develop properly and normally and may even shrink in size. Now, if you look at this diagram, uh, this is what a varicose seal looks on the outside. Usually, people see what they see, uh, dilated tortuous veins and scrotum, much like a bag of worms. And actually, when they, uh, the man examines himself, he feels this uh, a rubbery uh, dilated uh, veins around that region and sometimes it is tender to touch or they feel a bit swollen and they will notice especially so if they're standing up for example in the shower uh, and this is when they start uh, diagnosing themselves with this now again i uh, say talk about the symptoms of varicocele often uh, they may have some uh, mild symptoms or no signs, but for those with uh, very dilated and large varicoceles, uh, patients will experience pain and they range from a dull discomfort and constant ache uh, to sharp pain and swelling in the scrotum. Some people may actually experience severe testicular pain um, and this is worse over long periods of time. Uh, and, but particularly, they find that this pain, although worse in the day, uh, they find some relief when they're lying down, especially when they're going to sleep. Uh, physically, people may feel a lump, like a bag of worms, and becomes more noticeable as the veins enlarge. Now, how do we diagnose a varicocele uh, in, in the clinic? We do a physical examination. Uh, usually, I'll, I'll palpate or feel the, the region around uh, the testicle, 
uh, and above the testicle and usually I will feel a bag uh, of worms or a dilated bunch of veins uh, and we do an ultrasound of that region and it shows us very dilated veins and this confirms the diagnosis. Now, once diagnosed, how do we treat it? Now, we treat it for a variety of reasons. We treat varicoselectomy mainly for the indication of pain and uh, the patients are very bothered by it. And uh, some men, uh, we treat it uh, for the indication of infertility. They have uh, been trying to have uh, children and they find that this is a problem. Uh, and this is a cause of low sperm count. Now, traditionally, the surgery has been something called varicoselectomy. That is open surgery. And what the, we do is we approach the veins through the groin uh, or an incision uh, above the back of worms in the scrotal sac. And we uh, look for these veins and we dissect and tie them off. Uh, this is so that the veins don't backflow down uh, to the region and uh, get dilated again. Um, and sometimes we use laparoscopy to do that surgery. Uh, and uh, the advantage of that is open surgery is you can see quite a bit of the veins uh, and you can ligate them. Uh, but the problem is sometimes the recovery is a bit slow and may take a few weeks to recover. Patients frequently feel sore at the surgical site for a few weeks. In the interim, patients are also uh, advised against having uh, sex so that the new uh, semen uh, sperms can develop, if, especially if they're trying, uh, especially if their indication is for infertility. Nowadays, we have a uh, much more minimally invasive non-surgical option, and that is usually a procedure called embolization. It does not require any cuts in the scrotum or any cuts in the groin or any insertion or instruments into abdominal cavity vis-a-vis uh, -vis laparoscopy. Uh, this is a new procedure that we have been doing uh, uh, and it is done through my, tiny puncture in the vein, uh, usually the vein in the femoral vein in the groin or the vein in the neck. And, you, and what happens is through that tiny puncture, we will put a small tube called a catheter all the way down to the main vein that leads to the varicose seals. And once we are there, uh, we usually again uh, block off these veins with, with tiny titanium, uh, titanium coils or glue uh, and this will prevent the backflow uh, down to the scrotum. So we block off these veins to prevent them uh, from swelling up again. Now the advantage of this method uh, is that uh, it is uh, minimally invasive, it's fast recovery and usually we um, uh, block off the veins very extensively so that there is a very little chance of it recurring. Now, this is in contrast to surgical ligation where there is still a significant risk of these veins redeveloping again in the future. Uh, obviously, with this minimally invasive procedure, uh, the recovery is very fast. Patients are up and about and walking uh, usually about one to two hours after the procedure and they can resume uh, back to their normal activities, including running and jogging after a matter of one to two days. Um, and they can resume uh, having uh, uh, sexual intercourse as soon as uh, uh, one to two days instead of waiting for a while. Um, so the advantage is, is definitely less invasive, faster recovery, and certainly minimal pain with no scars. So this procedure is uh, usually performed again under light sedation and a little bit of local anesthetic uh, in our clinic, and, uh, and we send patients home on the same day. So who is eligible for this procedure, the embolization of varicocele? They are essentially all patients diagnosed with the varicocele uh, with the symptoms of testicular pain or infertility, and mainly patients who want to avoid uh, invasive surgery are fit and want to uh, return back to their daily activities uh, quickly with minimal pain and scarring. Thank you. Uh, there will be questions uh, after this in the Q&A session. So please feel free uh, to ask questions then and we'll try our best to answer them as much as possible. Thank you.